My name is Thorsten Norgaard, I'm a Danish photographer, I travel the world taking photographs and teaching photography. Today I'm going to do the final review of the Leica M10R. Below the video here there is a free ebook you can download that I've written about some of the famous photographers and their famous photographs how they did them, why they did them, and so on, and the history of photography. And also I tell about how I photograph and why I photograph. This is the Leica M10R, and you could say there's basically no introduction necessary, yet I will talk a little bit about it as what I call now a last review. You never know, I have uh, reviewed other cameras that was like 5, 10, even 15 years old because they were still worth talking about. Maybe that is the case with the M10R, but for now I think this is going to be the last one. The reason we are talking about this is obviously it's a nice camera, but also because here I have the Leica uh, M11. And of course, this is the new camera. It came out 13th of January 2022. And this has more megapixels. And there's a lot of great things to say about this camera. If you noticed, I haven't said amazing much about it yet. Uh, I am uh, forming my opinion and I'm taking uh, small, <laughs> small steps and taking around in the world, taking photographs and checking out things. Uh, one of the ideas is also that if and when you get I like M11, you can go to my website, you can download uh, the M11 uh, Video Masterclass and also the Leica 11, M11 Know All ebook. Uh, so I'm kind of taking my time to put it together properly. Um, there is some good things to say about the M11. You could say one great thing about a new camera is that it's new and that makes you excited. That is the idea, it should make you excited. Uh, it's like getting new shoes, you want, want to go walk or you get a new car, you want to go drive. The same with a camera that even you have an amazing uh, camera, uh, of course it's not new anymore, now it's just a tool, it's something you have, something you use. So the idea that something new is available is, you know, they can keep you up uh, two hours extra at night reading the forums about this camera and so on and see how can you get your hands on one of these uh, when they're hard to get. So that is an okay uh, excuse or reason to get a new camera or a new lens or a new anything is that this gives you a kick, it gives you enthusiasm to go out and do some more. Um, another great thing to say about this camera, well some of, one of the things that it has, it has a triple uh, sensor. And that means that it basically has a sensor with, you could say it has three layers, it's not really layers, but it has three size functions in the same layer. We're talking about a full frame sensor. 24 times 36 millimeters and somehow it's made so you can do a 60 megapixel photo but you can also do 37 and you can do 18 megapixels and it's all full frame but it's kind of like if you can imagine that you don't use all the dots or you use all the dots but then you throw uh, four or five of them in a bin and then it becomes one dot for the 18 megapixel but when you do 60 megapixel you use every uh, little dot. Something like that is the idea. Uh, and that is amazing and there's a new, few new steps that you can say, like it or not, the battery now sits in, uh, in here so you can pop it out from the bottom. Here says the SD card and so on. Uh, so there's a lot of innovation in this camera and one of the great things that I kind of admire about this camera is that it's made during uh, lockdown in Germany. And I have been traveling through Germany a few times during lockdown and that's like, uh, that's not something you make fun with, the hardcore on that. Uh, but anyways, Leica managed to have uh, the research and discovery department working from home. So they would have fancy machinery shipped to their home so they could sit and work on this camera and the technology and the software and the hardware and everything of this. And that is commendable that uh, they didn't just sit home and watch Netflix, but actually also made a new camera. Um, then when that is set is uh, I wouldn't say there's issues with this camera, there's different things, I mean there's small things you could say a little bit, one of the things for example is that you wouldn't notice that this button sits a little bit lower than this one, it's a little bit different, which means when I take photos with it then I kind of, I kind of, the camera moves because I have to press it. And it's something I can probably get used to it. And of course there is the thing, whenever you get a new camera it doesn't matter if you go up or down in price or from brand to brand or within the same brand, when you deal with a new sensor, 
you're always going to deal with a new uh, look or a change of the look of uh, the colors and the gray tones. And that's something you have to fine tune in software. And you can say with a Leica M11, uh, the profiles were not available till after the actual official release of the camera. And that's, you could say that becomes very important if you take, well, both Lightroom and Capture One. But if you take Capture One, it's very visible that you have uh, better photos with the real profile for this camera. So it's kind of like, uh, and that's, you could say that's from the official release, that's when you can actually start playing with the pictures and you can fine tune them to your look. And that's one thing I will say now that it doesn't really matter if you go M9, M10, M10R, M11, M12, whatever, there's always going to be fine tune of the sensor. And there's none of them where you can say it's a hopeless sensor, you cannot get the look you want. It's just a matter of you have to fine tune it. Um, and then you could say the, the, the M11 have a very uh, interesting, I would say, electronic feeling. It's very kind of high tech for a Leica in the way um, that you could say that the way the sensor works, I'm just trying and put on here, you can hear this sensor or the shutter. And that's live view. And if I turn off live view, it goes a little bit different. Uh, for some reason, it goes slower. And, and one of the things is if you have, you have live view basically all the time because the light meter in the M11 uses that, which is kind of brilliant and it saves some other space and, and so on. Uh, but it means that when you turn on the camera like this, the first thing you hear is the shutter going off because you have to open up so you can see, so the sensor can measure the light. And that also means that every time you take a picture, then the sensor has to, uh, to be open, but then have to close to take the picture, and open to take the picture, and then close again, and, and, and so on. And it actually gives an idea, it's a little bit difficult to actually like, tell how many pictures does this thing take when you're doing this. Uh, because then sometimes you have one click and two clicks and so on. Uh, and, and you actually, you thought you took five pictures, but you took two, but it was just all the clicks you, you heard. So there's a lot of things to get used to with this. And you have an, an electronic viewfinder here, you can put on. Uh, and I would say when you put this one on, just like if you put it on the M10 or M10R, it becomes slightly different camera, it becomes uh, less intuitive and more, you could say, a precision tool, but also more like uh, towards being a smartphone or some uh, electronic tool, which can be good for some things, but it's also, it takes something away of the innocence or simplicity that a Leica camera is known for. So we'll put it here, and it's definitely a camera I'm coming back to uh, in many ways in articles on my website and in my video masterclass and in my book, and I'll do more uh, YouTube videos about specific uh, things with it, mostly how to do things right and how to solve whatever uh, problems or issues you might have with it. So one of the things that happens every time Leica came out with a new camera is people think maybe the new one is great, but I actually maybe I like, maybe this is the reason or now I should go get the camera I always wanted with the older one. Or you can say some people are like, no, I actually really like the old cameras, I'm going to go buy that again or buy one more of them, whatever. And the interesting thing is we have here the M10R and I said almost no introduction is necessary. I'll make one anyways because maybe you're not familiar with the whole Leica story. Uh, we can go back to almost like the basic, basic uh, Leica digital camera and that is the first full frame is the uh, Leica M9 that I have had since 2009. I've taken a lot of photos with this. And uh, this is a beautiful camera because it is like a film Leica, which is, everybody knows, film Leicas. And this is the digital version. And in many ways it feels uh, like a film camera. And, uh, and it's just a beautiful uh, tool. And then still, uh, like I would make them, they made one more after that M240 that where they put on video and all kinds of stuff that people asked about. I don't have it here on the table, I used it a lot also. Uh, and when I used it, I was happy with it. When I stopped using it, I was also happy with it because the next thing came was uh, the M10. And the M10, it's kind of funny, they go M9, 
M240 and then they go back to the numbers 10, 11. Uh, different story for another day. I actually have a video uh, uh, on my channel here also. You can, you can see what's the difference with the names and what the story with this. But the M10 is a great camera. It's 2017 it came out. It's a great camera, it's 24 megapixels. And it is basically going back to the simplicity of the M9 that everybody agreed was awesome, which reminds of the original film cameras. And here you have a camera that very much looks like a film camera. I mean, I walk around with this one, people say, oh, you still shoot film. I was like, no, it has like a screen here. And then still they actually don't believe it because everything else looks so film-like. But this is a great camera, it's built like a, like a film camera. You have an ISO dial here and all. Everything about it looks like uh, a film camera and it's very simple and it's very sturdy and everything. Um, and it's not that there wasn't issues when the M10 came out in 2017, because the same, you have to have the color profile, you have to figure out how do I get the look that I want with this. But you could say the basic of the camera was that no, it's, it's tuned towards the M9 colors that people liked, and the M9 colors of the sensor was fine-tuned to look as much as you could with a digital sensor towards the Kodachrome look, which was like the last uh, look of film or photography that we agreed on, in color at least. So the M10 was great and uh, it came in silver and black. Then came M10P, uh, also in silver and black, and then came M10P in green here that I have. And there's nothing different than, than for, in this, except this green is like, a, it's like a, I think, I think it's a limited edition, but in any case, it's a different edition and I kind of like this idea of having a green camera. So I had this one and used it a lot. So this, this have for a long time have been my main tool and it's just like a machine, it just does what I tell it to do, you take, take pictures and uh, you know, this is great. Then like I did an interesting thing because then came the M10R uh, and that is basically all what they have here, same camera but 40 megapixels. So new bigger sensor because that's kind of like like I had stayed with 24 megapixels for a long time, which I actually agree is a great idea because you don't really need more than 24. Nevertheless, people are going to wait for when is the next camera coming with more megapixels, and you look at all reviews that compare megapixels and prices and blah blah uh, frames per second and all this stuff that is not really that important, but yet it is if you want to produce and sell cameras, and that is what Leica does. That's it's a commercial company, uh, they make a living <laughs> from making cameras, so they're not <laughs> going to just keep selling the same camera as 1950 because then nobody would buy it. So that is, you could say in a nutshell, that is the simplicity of the M10R. It's the same camera as since 2017, more megapixels. In the context of the M11 here, you could say, see how much they look alike. They're like almost the same. Sometimes I have trouble, I pick up a camera, I can actually, I pick up the wrong one. Uh, they have this FN button here as a difference, that's almost the only thing you can tell. And of course, you can tell the bottom plate also, that this one has the battery, and this one has a bottom plate. But that's it. And the interesting thing with, you could say, for me it wasn't really essential to go for M10, uh, P, 24 megapixel to M10R, I mean, who cares? And kind of also you know, okay, no, that's gonna, that's gonna be like, it's just a matter of 6, 12 months, whatever, after the M10R, then it's gonna come M11, so let's wait for that. Nevertheless, I did get M10R, uh, and you can say it didn't make a big difference in my life compared to M10P, this is still the tool. Uh, but then a funny thing happened. When the M11 came out, I thought, let me get uh, <laughs> one more M10R. And this is uh, the holy grail of Leica cameras for me right now. This is the M10R in black paint. So this, you could say almost all Leica, let's not go there, but almost all Leicas are made of brass. So that means that when you use a camera a lot, like, like I did with this one, this is used for like three or four years. Uh, this one has taken more than 200,000 pictures. I have another one, M9 also, that has taken a little bit less than 200,000. But they brass, and uh, that's something that, at least when you use it and you brass a camera, 
or some famous photographer from back when did it with one of the film likers, everybody agrees this looks amazing. It's not so great for resale because most people don't want to buy a camera that is worn a lot. So, but you can say that's not the point, you buy this one to use it and kind of keep it forever. So that's what I did with this one and this one is basically the same as the silver one. I mean it's black paint, then it has a few details that for example the shutter speed dial here is has a different shape, I mean you think I'm not, but it does. Uh, and then it has a silver button here on a black camera which is something I asked for many times but like I never want to make it. And the reason I wanted it is because it's beautiful but also because the, the famous Leica MP film camera where MP stands for mechanical perfection and it's a complete analog ca film camera is beautiful. Uh, so this one actually has some of the details like this and it's almost like, uh, I mean, I've been using the M11 a lot and I write notes and I analyze and I see how do I fix this and how do I get it to do this and why does it do that and blah blah. And then sometimes I'll just take this camera out and it just feels like it's so, I mean, listen how simple this is. Uh, and then we can compare to this one. Let's just put uh, the live view on you have here. I mean, it's two clicks for each picture. I don't even know. I can't. I still, ha I still haven't gotten the ribbon. Uh, I'm sure I'm gonna get it, and you know, all this jazz. But this is a beautiful camera. And you could say this is maybe. I don't even know if the answer, but it's something to think about. Let's say, let's put it that way. Uh, while you try to see if you can find a dealer that had a like a, have a like a M11 you can buy, um, then maybe you're considering maybe like M10R is not such a bad idea uh, because it has 40 megapixels. It really works. It's been tested since 2017, and you can see the M10R is the refinement of. Uh, the M, I mean, it's not, okay, you go 40, 60 megapixels, I mean, what's the difference? Uh, there's not really any other features that is, uh, is amazing different. It's it, that the whole idea with the Leica that's kind of like the same, the same, the same, and then with a few tweaks uh, and new things, and this one has a few facilities, like you can connect a USB cable here, so you can download or, or charge the battery. Uh, the battery time is really good on this one. That is the big question. Uh, well, you could say, maybe it's not a question, you could say the solution would just be you just have all the cameras, it doesn't matter. But if you have this idea, no, I'm just going to have one new camera or one camera, and should it be the, should I get the M11 or should I get the M10R? That, then, then you have a really interesting uh, quest because you could say this is a camera that's going to last for many years. You could say some people still use the M. 9 here and they're happy with it from 2009 so that, that's quite some years, they still take pictures they all take pictures and they all take great pictures and you can put the same lens on them you can take the most amazing pictures so why would you need a new camera except of course for the excitement that wow I can get a new camera and I'm sure it's going to be fun and better and everything and I have had the other one for a while whatever excuse you come up with uh, but you could say you could Go in and say, no, I'm going to take an M10R. This is like, uh, feels very much like a Leica film camera. And it's just digital and it's 40 megapixel and it really works. Uh, and it's been tested for five years, four or five years before uh, they made this model. And the resale price, or not the resale price, but the second hand price is going to stay uh, pretty high for a long time. And then, you know, I'll see what happens, you know. So, and you could say my solution is just okay, I have an M11 here that I'm working with, we're trying to work it out, and then I have M10R here that sits in my hand uh, so well because I used the M10, M10P, M10R for five years and I've taken, I actually don't know how many pictures I've taken, but I've taken a lot and, uh, and it's great pictures. So <laughs> why worry about uh, the next one? So that is kind of, like you said, and that's also why, why do an, a review of the M10R again, or M10 again, or M10P again, because we've been there, we talked about it, uh, everybody used it, 
but it is an option you could say also if you see this video if you in a few years you will you will be looking for an M10R second hand because you cannot get it new anymore. Uh, M10R you can actually get new. Uh, I have uh, a link to my uh, my dealer below the video. Can Hansen in New York and I ship worldwide, and uh, I'm sure they can make a good deal. Either trade in your equipment or whatever you need, uh, camera or lens. Uh, but this is actually M10R uh, in black and silver is something you can find a uh, new stock of around the world because that's how it works that dealers have this camera and then comes M11 uh, and then everybody wants M11 but then there's also some people who wants the M10R uh, so right now you can get an M10R brand new and you can probably get an okay deal on it uh, somehow and uh, in a couple of years it's going to be really hard or a year or even maybe six months, it's going to be really hard to find an M10R brand new. Uh, and it doesn't have to go uh, this fancy uh, black model. This is just my little baby that I know this is one I'm going to keep uh, forever. And we'll see how much I use the M11 or how much I use this. Or I, you know, I, I tend to go and use uh, the newest camera the more and just get used to it. And usually have a two of, of whatever camera I'm using. As my main camera, I have two of them, so I always have a backup. Uh, so that's kind of the story on it. And I guess that's all I wanted to say. I mean, I have lots of videos uh, on uh, the Magic of Light TV channel here, and lots of articles on my website about all the Leica cameras. I mean, I have on the M9, I did or have done uh, 19 pages on this camera, or everything from the firmware, how to, which SD card to use, how to edit this and that, and how to do all kinds of different tricks with it, uh, and how it works in rain and so on. And I have the same for the M10, M10P, M10R, and that's also what's happened with the M11. So if you feel you want to know more about the different cameras here, feel free, uh, look at my articles and my videos. I think that's all I'm going to say in this so far last M10R review. Uh, till I see you next time, remember to always wear a camera.